Good morning, guys. It is Tuesday the 11th, I believe. Um, I didn't get any work done Friday because I had uh, some previous engagements. Uh, you guys are probably just now watching part three. I also have a part four from last week. Um, my internet at home is messed up. I have no upload, so I had to take my computer up to my wife's office and use hers to uh, upload that video. So you guys just got that one this morning. That would have been last Wednesday. So I'll show you where I'm at right now. I've got more video footage to upload, but uh, this is where I'm at for now. Here's the driver's side. It is covered, that silver surface on there is weld through primer, which is this guy right here. And that is your corrosion protection behind your welds. <clears throat> there's your part number. Um, there's other companies, SEM makes one. Uh, there's, half a dozen that make it. Um, at my parts store, this is the only one that I've found that will actually spray. They don't have a lot of turnover on that kind of product, so this stuff sits on the shelf and at almost 30 bucks a can, uh, I get tired of taking them back because they won't spray at all. Um, either the propellant is um, discharged in them or they're, the tubes are plugged up inside or whatever. So we put that on the surface, here's the passenger side, which is also ready to go, um, on the surface that we're gonna weld to. Um, a lot of guys don't like the weld through primer because it spatters. It makes the MIG welder spatter. Um, I don't know if that's due to the type or not letting it dry long enough. Um, you really need to let this stuff dry. And if it does spatter on you, what you can do, I know uh, Milrick does this, and I've done it before because it's pissed me off in the past, but we're going to go with it and see if it, it works. If my first weld spatters all the shit, then I'm going to grind it off in those spots. But uh, what you can do, you can see where the old uh, spot welds were, which are going to be a plug weld right now with the MIG welder. Um, each place there's going to be one of those welds, you can grind that away a little bit. Um, sometimes lacquer thinner will wipe it off, solvent will take it off, but um, we're going to roll with it and see if it works. So what I'm doing now, I've already got one panel done, I'm letting the camera charge up here this morning. It's been sitting in a cold so it kind of discharged on me, but you can see there's holes all over this and those are all my plug weld holes, which you might look at that and go, oh my god, that seems like a lot of plug weld holes, but a couple of those are misses, um, especially where this square opening is. That's where this panel will weld to the cab floor supports. Um, and there's only two spots where I have to do it. That inner rocker will actually be lap welded to what's left of the old inner rocker back here. Um, that has all been metal prepped. Uh, wire wheeled down grinder where I could get the grinder. Um, trying to think. I'll take you guys in and show you the stuff that I am using. I tried to order some OSFO online, but uh, that didn't work out because nobody around here carries it, but this is it. Uh, this is made by Pore 15. It's a zinc phosphate, um, phosphoric acid type deal. Um, works very similar to the OSFO or any of the metal prep or uh, rust mort or there's so many names for that stuff. That's the stuff. You spray that on and let it turn to rust black. You try and get as much out as you can. Now we had some spots down in here that were just uh, had some crust on them so I beat all the loose material off. I wire brushed in there the best that I could. I soaked that better part of all day yesterday. Um, I had some other stuff to do. I had sold some stuff on Craigslist and I had to meet a guy to deliver a plow uh, push frame. And that kind of dicked me around for half the day and I had to go get um, a punch tool because I don't own one. Well, I do now. Here we go. There you go. And what this does, the side on the right is your punch, side on your left there that looks like an anvil with an offset in it, that is your flange tool. Um, I don't really need the flange tool right now, but I did need the punch because drilling 60 spot weld holes on the drill press or even by hand, it just takes too damn long. 
and uh, I'll put you guys on the stand and show you how this baby works. This is a central pneumatic. You guys all know where that came from. Um, some of the better online tool suppliers sell this tool for about 70 bucks to 100 bucks, depending. Um, this one was 29 and it works fine so far. I've tried to make a flange with it. Um, I think it'll work fine for 20 gauge steel. It's rated to 16. There is no way that will put a flange in a piece of 16 gauge steel. It's just not strong enough. Um, I did try one over on uh, some of the scrap metal here. It's hard to get into the into the thing. Hang on a second, guys. But uh, this has also got some bends in it, so I don't know if it'll even work. Let's see if that even put a flange in there. I doubt it. Yeah, it really didn't like that. This is uh, 18 gauge. I think on the thin stuff, it'll be just fine. But it punches a hole like a champ. Sorry about the shaky cam. And there you go. 3 16 hole. I think some of them will punch a little deeper hole. They also make one of these tools that is a uh, pistol grip style that looks sort of like a uh, air hammer or air chisel, whatever you want to call it. Um, like I said, for 20, 20 some bucks, I was going to give it a shot. Um, I, I've had good luck with their air tools. Some things I've heard that are terrible are there uh, little air saws and things like that but I bought this and I bought a needle scaler that was on sale um, I'll show you that I think I threw it in the top drawer of the toolbox here make sure I'll set it down and step away that's a needle scaler right there it's got those little needles and when you pull the throttle lever uh, these oscillate and vibrate and they're good for taking off um, like stick welding slag uh, mill scale and heavy rust and stuff like that when you're working with heavier steel um, they're not real good for uh, sheet metal type stuff but uh, I've used them in the past I've borrowed them and this was on sale for I want to say 20 bucks 1999 something like that and it works just fine um, I love how they try and sell you the tool warranty on that kind of stuff which is kind of ridiculous for me because it's a uh, hour round trip there so I probably burn as much in fuel to exchange or go buy a new tool than I would to, to just uh, go over and exchange one it isn't worth it um, especially if you get two or three of them in a row that are bad um, I just roll the dice on the stuff for the price I'm not going to bitch about it. So I'm going to get you guys on the stand. I'm rambling. I had to go to the dentist this morning uh, for my annual checkup and cleaning and all that stuff. And they put, um, my wife is the dentist, by the way. Um, and uh, the hygienist talked me into putting uh, a fluoride treatment on my teeth. And uh, I haven't had one of those since I was a kid. And uh, they used to have it in these like trays that you had to hold in your mouth and the stuff tastes awful. And uh, it was just an all-around bad experience. It used to, I remember as a kid that it burned. I was never afraid of the dentist, but uh, I just don't remember it being all that good. I remember it being kind of gross and nasty. Um, but this stuff, uh, they painted on with like a little disposable applicator. And if I'm talking a little lispy or goofy today, it's because they painted that stuff on my teeth. And it's almost like a, uh, I don't know if anybody's ever had a sealant put on um, their teeth, but it's, I don't want to say it's gritty, but it's almost sticky, uh, like somebody put contact cement on my teeth. But it wears off, and that's just to hold the, the chemical in place while it uh, treats your teeth. But I got a clean bill of health there, so that's good. Don't want to upset the wife. I try and take pretty good care of the old teeth. Um, both my folks had really, really uh, poor uh, health when it came to their teeth, and they were both in dentures by the time they were in their 50s um, and I'm on the uprise of 40 right now and I don't look forward to that although that was before the advent of uh, dental implants and things like that I just don't want to go that route I'd like to keep my uh, factory originals as long as I can hold on to them so I'll get you guys set up here on the stand
and I'll show you how this tool works. And hopefully I can go home later. I don't know how many of you guys use uh, Frontier DSL for your high-speed internet. I've never had a problem with it. Um, up until about a month ago, it was kind of, uh, I don't want to say it was slow, but it was having problems buffering. And uh, now I went to upload, well, last Thursday's video, and it won't even upload. My upload speed is like 0 .02 uh, megabits per second, which is, I don't know if that's, I don't know what it's supposed to be. They claim 3 uh, megabits per second download speed, so that would be, you know, watching video, that would be, you know, downloading programs, information, uh, attachments to emails, things like that. But the upload speed is supposed to be like, uh, I would say somewhere around um, one megabit per second, and it's like .0 two or something like that. So I don't know if my wireless router, which is also the modem, is screwed. Um, I'm going to go home and try and, uh, I got an ethernet cable, I'm going to try plugging directly into the router and see if that helps. I know that's a big reason that uh, some video uploads fail is because the connection gets crummy with the wireless. It drops it for whatever reason. So I'm going to go directly into the modem and see what happens there. Um, if not, I don't know, I guess I'll, I'll call the provider and see what they have to say. I'd like to upgrade my speed because I went to my wife's office a little early this morning to use their wireless and, uh, they have cable and I used to have cable at my old house and I loved it. Uh, we don't have cable even available on my street, so it's either you go with a uh, satellite internet provider, which is pricey, and I've had the satellite internet before, and it was so-so in my area. Um, cloudy days, you wouldn't have internet, period. Um, but that was probably 10 years ago, so I don't know that I want to foot the bill for that. Um, but her upload speed, I did a speed check on it for upload and download through the cable modem. And it was it was ridiculous how much faster it was. I want to say it was like uh, uh, somewhere between 5 and 7 megabits per second um, upload speed. And download was like 15 instead of the 1.2 that I'm getting and their claim of 3. So enough bullshitting about that. Um, Make sure you guys are in this picture here. Zoom, 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 zoom. Almost too close. Actually, I'm going to move that tripod closer. Why not? You only live twice. We'll live dangerously. Here we go. All right, so I've got some spots marked out, and basically, we're just going to uh, Some of these tools have replaceable uh, punchers too for them, but man, for the price of this thing, I'm pretty happy. So, hopefully, you guys saw a little bit of that. And that's where we're at. We got our holes all along the top. We'll take the little uh, angle grinder with some 36 on it and buzz the paint off around all these spot welds, and I'll do the same thing with this side that I did with the other side. After I got all the paint cleaned off, you can see paint's cleaned off around those two, but it's got that weld through primer. This is the inside. I won't put any primer on the outside until I'm done. 
So we'll just clean those bad boys up and uh, and go from there. And get them fitted up and get some weld through primer on all that good stuff. This is already going to be a long video, so I'm going to do a little bit of this and turn you guys off until I get these clamped up and ready to weld. So this is what I'm doing. You don't need to take too much off. Uh, the weld heat zone isn't really much bigger than that and I'll actually, when I'm done welding, um, I will take a wire wheel over that. If there's any loose stuff, I'll probably not grind these plug welds down. These are inside in an area that I don't have to weld over again, so there's no reason to, to really grind them. Um, nobody will ever see them and it's not going to hurt anything. So that's what you do. You have to do that to both sides and uh, then you can put your weld through primer on. So that's almost 17 minutes. I will turn you guys back on in a little bit. We'll see you then. One thing I wanted to mention to you guys, when you buy these aftermarket replacement panels like this with the black uh, primer on them, um, you want to take a rag with some lacquer thinner on it. And uh, I have a clean rag right here and I have some thinner in a bottle. Rub a spot on it. And if that comes off on your rag, which this does not, then it is nothing more than a uh, 1K primer of some sort. And if you want any type of corrosion protection on it, you need to get it off. These are actually e-coated with a, uh, or powder coated in some fashion. So this is not going to just flake off. Um, it's one thing you need to check out before you go too far. If you do not, then you probably should uh, clean all of that off put some etch primer on it, maybe some epoxy too, and then grind your weld spots off. Um, the other thing is, I got a sticker right here, so I'm taking that off. Um, just a quick FYI. We'll catch you in a few. Alright guys, Oop. there we go. Welder is set up. Welding blanket in place, as it was when I was cutting the stuff out with the grinder. And starting in the middle here and I'm working this way and then that way um, not bad on the spatter from the uh, well through primer as long as you start right in the center of the hole and get it nice and warm and then continue to go in a circular motion to fill it up um, I've got a Miller uh, 180 and I've got it set on about Two and a half voltage and uh, maybe uh, 38 wire speed, something like that. Want to make sure your uh, panel is as close as you can get it to what you're welding. because I'm working in tight quarters here, but you get the idea.
probably for that 316 spot weld, I'd say there's a quarter inch of a heat mark around that weld. So I know I'm getting good penetration. I'm nice and tight back here on the previous one. And we're just going to keep going right down the line here. Real, real long, real fast. When I was drilling holes for the spot welds to the uh, cab floor supports, I missed three times here, so I gotta fill those. Not a big deal. Um, up here in the front, this is going to be an overlap joint, and that's got weld through primer over here. So that'll probably get kind of ugly. Uh, these up here shouldn't be any problem. I'm gonna get on a uh, stool here to finish all those up. But basically what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna start from the center of the cab and I'm gonna work back that way and then I'm gonna come back and go back up this way. Everything's clamped in place. I'm gonna have to hold a, uh, like say a screwdriver or something next to each one of these so that they're tight. My pliers aren't big enough. My clamps aren't um, aren't long enough, I, I guess is the best way to put it. So we'll do all of those welds all the way down the line so that if we do get a little warpage, um, that it's not too cattywampus, that we can't draw it back down. So that's where I'm at for now. I'll turn you guys back on when I get this side done. I'll show you what I got. Um, that's what your plug weld should look like, button weld, whatever. Um, don't need to grind these off, these are inside. I will wire wheel across the top of those and blow some more weld through primer over top of that for some corrosion protection. 
I suppose I could put some epoxy on it too, but the nice thing about the weld through when it's dry, it's not flammable. So I'll use that for my corrosion protection inside here. I guess you could put some undercoating in here too. Um, I am not going to replace the intermediate rocker, the one that goes from here down to here at this time. They're not available through aftermarket that I can find. And I started to make them and it is gonna be an absolute nightmare to get the spot welds on the bottom because that flange will be from where my finger is in maybe an inch. And then to locate all that through the bottom and plug weld all the way up through there. These aftermarket rock, or, uh, inner rockers have holes in the bottom right here. I'm assuming that's where they think you're gonna plug weld them. So what, they give you one, two, three, four places to plug weld them. There might have been one more, but it was on the end that got cut off. That's probably sufficient. I may drill a couple more. The outer rocker actually has a, a hole here. Maybe you could put, use that to put a Cleco or something in to hold it or a bolt. Um, but instead of drilling holes through this side and plug welding here, you can actually plug weld from the inside so you don't have any body work uh, on the outside except for the burnt paint. So that's where we're at. And I'll give you a quick uh, show of the welder here. That's where it's set. I don't even know if that thing's gonna focus. Two and a half and uh, about 38. If you're unsure, you know your wire size. If you got a welder like this, I think all Miller and Lincoln welders are like this. But uh, we're welding steel with ER70S, which is uh, dash six, which is uh, sheet metal welding wire, good wire. Um, it's non-flux cord wire. O23 or 24 thickness, I forget which. I think it's O23. Uh, no matter though, I mean that's real close. We're welding 18 gauge steel, so it's that top row, you follow it over. They're saying two and a half for your voltage and 35 for your wire speed. Um, probably depends on your uh, your technique and how you weld. But for me, uh, I weld a little slower. So I can usually slow the wire speed down a little bit. And I actually, I bumped the voltage up a touch and the wire speed up a touch because I didn't like the, uh, the way it was welding at first. I may still tweak it yet. So I'll bring you back when uh, this is all welded up. All right, fellas. It is about a uh, quarter after one. It's time for me to go get some lunch. I'm uh, just going to run up the road two minutes here. I've waited probably 45 minutes to make sure nothing's smoking here. And looked underneath my uh, my little weld blanket here. I'm not seeing anything. Here's what I got so far. I am going to pretty up a couple of these welds even though you don't see them because I can't help myself. That stuff right there, I'm going to run a grinder across it real quick. Um, I just stitch welded all that or spot welded and connected spots. And uh, all the stuff underneath, they're done all the way down. Everything's all nice. Remember I said I accidentally drilled three uh, extra holes right here. Those two and that one. I filled those in real quick. And I uh, got some bubble gum welds up there. It's just a lap to hold it to that inside piece and then uh, the outer rocker will get spotted to it of course down here and the outer rocker will be uh, butt welded to this so not worried about it moving I don't even know why I did that I guess I could have uh, put a couple plug welds in it and called it a day I'll probably do that with the other side that was kind of a waste of time um, Another thing I might do just to keep some of the moisture out of there is just take some one part seam sealer and smear it across that after I uh, wire wheel this set of uh, plug welds down and uh, bomb some weld through primer over them just to give them some corrosion protection. So that's that. I mean really it welded pretty good. As long as you start dead center in those welds and let the popping do what it's going to do 
with that weld through primer um, it seems to work pretty good once you get it hot and and start uh, filling that hole in first two were a little sketchy I was a little skeptical about uh, continuing on what I was doing but the rest of them I'm happy with all nice nice just got to clean them up so I'm gonna run up the street and grab a sandwich because who doesn't love a good sandwich and uh, I'm gonna have my lunch and uh, I'll be back after a while after I get this cleaned up and ready to uh, fit the outer rocker to it see ya hola friends a little uh, three o'clock update Tuesday I don't know if I had this in the last clip but obviously this is in the welds got cleaned up as much as they're gonna get inside there and more weld through primer yeah there's some ugly looking uh, spots down there but you don't see them so I'm over it take a walk over to the driver's side just finished spotting this in there you go that one's in now too. tidy up welds and then it'll be time to throw a rocker panel on and uh, cross my fingers like I was saying originally in one of these videos when I started fitting those rockers and doors on doors off doors on doors off again it's just it's a pain in the ass process anybody who's done it knows exactly what I'm talking about unless they know an easier way um, that's how I know how to do it you know trial and error that's how you learn um, like I probably mentioned before I've never done a set in one of these Silverados before I've done the old 80s Chevys and I would take one of those trucks any day of the week over one of these except for the fact the doors come off so easy on these trucks it does make it pretty simple um, but it's a hell of a lot easier to take fenders off um, the beds are heavier on the older ones I mean the new ones like you know that guy right there that thing's not very heavy that's a two-manner there if you're ambitious so all right I'm gonna grind some welds I'm gonna keep on trucking along it's only three o'clock I want to quit about four to five o'clock so I can stick around for another uh, maybe 45 minutes or an hour to make sure I'm not uh, having a barbecue here and uh, you know luckily for me this is a diesel truck so um, don't have any uh, explosion uh, hazards here not like you would with gasoline but uh, she'll still cook I'm sure of it so I'll catch up with you guys in a little bit see ya alright guys Tuesday quarter after five I'll show you where I'm at this is my stopping point for today it's time to spend about 45 minutes or an hour and clean up here and uh, make sure we got no bonfires going but uh, probably should have checked my uh, door height gap before I uh, cut the old rockers out but from what I see here I've got it as close as I can get it I can almost get my pinky nail under it there and it's a little bit tighter right there not much and uh, no interference when the door opens and closes door latches and then we go up to the front and it looks like kind of a mess but it's actually not bad um, my gas flow on my MIG welder somehow the regulator uh, weaseled its way down it was only putting out about 10 or 12 cubic feet per hour which is not enough uh, you probably need closer to 20 so I adjusted that and started getting a little bit better welds on the heavier steel the little quick burst spot welds weren't giving me any trouble it was enough shielding gas because I wasn't moving the torch um, so that's all nice nice it lined up beautifully right in here I mean it's level straight across there that body line matches up that one matches up and so does that one um, the rockers bent just a tad different on the bottom um, original rocker you can see there's a line here and that line in this one isn't quite the same it's close but not quite I rather it match up in here um, than down there that's not as important to me but uh, give you a little look see inside here I got a couple of tacks going back there there's a hell of a gap 
I just had a real hard time uh, squinching it in there to fit it, so I may have to uh, piece a little bit of metal on the back of that in there, and I, I had to notch it in there to get it to squeeze in right originally. But uh, other than that, it fits good. Door opens and closes. I'm about sick and tired of taking the doors on and off, but it is what it is. So we're that far. Um, now that I see how that one's going to go, I think the other side may go a little quicker. The only thing I'm going to do before I go home is uh, spray some weld-in primer on this side. I got all those welds uh, cleaned up with a grinder just to touch. I had a couple grape apes, um, which is from dirty steel or not enough shielding gas or both. There was, I think, a couple of pits. And then this lip up on the top, where's my, there's, that one might have been a great ape up there. But uh, other than that, it, this one welded on fine too. Um, throw some weld through primer on this so it can dry overnight. And that's where I'm going to shut her down. So I hope you guys all had a great Tuesday. We'll catch you on Wednesday. Hopefully this one will upload. I'm gonna try to plug it directly into my router tonight and hopefully that will fix the problem. Hopefully it's just a router issue. So we'll get her uploaded for you. We'll see you on the next one. See you tomorrow. I almost forgot. I really haven't used this uh, auto set feature on my welder too many times. So uh, I tried the welding for dummies out a little bit and it works pretty good. Um, the welder is still running so I'm letting it uh, cool down, not that I really generated much heat welding sheet metal and it was spot welding at that, but I always let it run and uh, it never hurts to take the blowgun to your air intake down there and blow out the inside of the welder every once in a while. Dust is definitely the enemy of those. Alright, just a little add on there, catch you guys later.